we're going to focus on well we're doing two things mainly i would really wanted to focus on the backbone because that's what i talked about um on instagram and how we think of the backbone as um it has you know it has also the connotation of firmness and determination but we want to keep our spine um you know str strong and firm and long so we're going to do a lot of that but i also am just studying about knee injuries so we're going to do some work with the knees as well but we're going to talk about gravity and feeling which part of us is grounded which part of us is lifting away from earth so that the you know we root and we rise so we're starting standing and we're going to just do a ujjayi breath so breathe in. Do you, I, you want to just give me a thumbs up? Do you know Ujjayi breath or do you need me to explain it? Shari, do you know Ujjayi breath? I can't hear you, what? Can you explain That's, it? Sure, I'll explain it. So um, first we, we want to breathe in deeply in the belly because when we breathe in through the belly, it expands the diaphragm and we're talking about the spine. So we want to add some you know, like just massage the spine. If we can breathe into the bottom of our lungs, we expand our whole back and front. So we're gonna breathe in through the nostrils and the Ujjayi breath is really about the, the exhale. So it's where you constrict the throat. You're still breathing out through the nostrils, but you're constricting the throat. So you sound like Darth Vader. I don't know if you could hear with these microphones, you might be able to, so I'll, I'll just do it. You breathe in and when you breathe out, <sighs> It's like make it's like fogging up a mirror. I don't know if you could hear that, but it it it's if you took your breath and went, <sighs> it's that sound breathing out through the nostril, and that's okay. Great. All right. So we're gonna do four of those, just standing here, filling in the belly, but in our tadasana. So we want to be well aligned, and you want to lift the quads. And also one of the things I learned about with the knees. So I'm like really about the injuries right now, and knees are so. Um, What's the right word? You know, our ankles are strong, our hips are strong, the knees are where we can have injuries happen very easily. And what I was reading, you know, it's common sense. You want to strengthen the quads, strengthen the calves, use the ankles and the hips to protect the knees. So one of the things is as we get older, and they said it, you know, if you're above 50, you really should always keep a little bit of a micro bend in the knees. When we keep our legs really straight we are putting pressure on the knees because, because we're all aligned and one on top of the other. So when we're standing here, just a slight micro bend in the knees. Okay, so a Ujjayi breath. Barbara, hi. Um, we are just Ujjayi breathing for four breaths, which is breathe in through the nostrils, breathe out with making a Darth Vader noise. Okay, four. So do it at your own pace. I'm going to suggest about four seconds in and four seconds out. So I'll count. Well, I'm not going to count because I said do it at your own pace, but I'm going to start breathing in. So and out. me one more. Bring your hands up on the inhale. See if you can keep the Ujjayi breath because it's a really great breath. The, the Darth Vader noise actually stimulates the vagus nerve, which stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. So our hands are straight up, palms touching. If you want to do the Anjali Mudra, fingers pointed and we're lengthening the spine. So see if you can put about, I don't know, an extra half inch in your spine by doing that. Keep your hands up there. I'm just coming over to the computer so that you guys can see me. Okay. So get tall and then take your left wrist into your right hand as we turn slightly to the right, bending at the side. So one thing to notice is when we bend to the right, we compress the right side and we stretch out the left side. It's always the opposite of where you're moving is what is what you're working on. 
Take a deep breath here. And again, you draw your breath out. So through the nostrils, see if you can fog up the mirror with that, that noise that fogs the mirror. Come center. And today we're thinking about what gravity is pulling down. So we're grounded at the feet, we're grounded in the hips and we're lifting with the spine, with the arms, shoulders though, try to keep them away from your ears. And then let's take the hand, the opposite hand. So now you have your right wrist in your left hand as we lean towards the left with an open chest. Hands up high. And then we're gonna swan dive down into a forward bend. So you wanna micro bend in the knee. Now this is the first forward bend. So your hamstrings aren't warmed up yet. Micro bend in the knee to protect the knee. Also to release the hamstrings just a little so you're not really you know, putting too much tension on them right now. Let your hands just come to wherever they land. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Get your spine really long. So you're pushing in with your feet the gravity is in your feet in the lower part of your body and you're actually lengthening the spine, letting it hang really long and relaxed. And then reverse swan dive up. We're still moving in the seven directions of the spine, hands onto your hips. As we lean back with a very straight spine, we're not bending at the waist, we're just leaning the spine back. Really the movement is from the hips just looking up at the ceiling, just to give a slight tiny back bend. Come center. We're gonna to twist to the right. So your right hand could go behind you and actually like wrap around you. Put your left hand on your right hip as we turn and look over the shoulder. So when you inhale, you wanna get tall. And when you exhale, you wanna relax and just see if you could look a little further over the shoulder. Normally we do this seated. Today I wanted to stand because I'm reading all about the knees. Come center and let's do the other side. So the left hand wraps around, the right hand comes onto your hip, sort of your pelvic bone. Get tall as you inhale, and as you exhale, look over your shoulder. Come center. And what we'll do now is, I never have to know whether to go to the side for you, so I'm just gonna stay straight right now. We're gonna hands up to the sun as you inhale, exhale, swan dive down. So this is our second forward bend. So just start to feel a little bit more supple, hands on either side of the feet and come into a plank. So in your plank, bring your navel to your spine. Hips are a little raised. We're gonna hang here for a minute. Come back and forth, push your heels back behind you. Energy from the crown of the head to the heels of the feet. Then let them lean a little forward. Bring them back behind you. Bend your knees and come into a crouch. Come back to a plank. We're holding the plank. Deep breath. See if you could keep up with that Ujjayi breath. And then plant the knees down. If you need a blanket for padding, I'm so reading about the knees right now. If you wanna pad your knees with a blanket, you might want to do that to protect them. There's very little padding in your body on your anatomy of your knees. So it's fine to pad your knees with a blanket or have two mats or a mat with a cushion in it like I have. And we're in table. So now I do want to come to the side so you can see better. So in table, your wrists are under your shoulders and your knees are about a fist apart. We're gonna cat cow for a moment. Actually, let's first just move around the wrists, moving the hips around and around. And then stop and go the other direction. So not only are you working the hips by doing this, you're working the wrists. All right, so now let's do cat cow. So we're gonna bring the navel up towards the spine Tilt the pelvis, tuck the pelvis, and tuck your chin for cat as you exhale. When you inhale, you're bringing the navel down to the mat, your tailbone comes up to the sky, and your gaze is towards the wall right in front of you. And you do that with the breath. 
So it's exhaling when you're in the rainbow or the cow position and inhaling when you come back to cat. This is all just warming up the spine. Come back to center, take the right foot, send it back, bring it up hip high. And the first thing we're gonna do before we go into our bird dog is we're gonna just twirl the ankle around in one direction and then bring the ankle around in the other direction. I'm doing all this reading as part of my curriculum and it's all about injuries and it's about how important it is to warm up all of our joints and then bring your foot into a flex position and take the left hand and bring it out in front of you. This is bird dog. It's also a balance pose. It's, a, it's core work. So think about the navel and bringing the navel toward the spine as you're balancing. Take a deep breath in. See if you could you jaya breath out and place the hand back down under the shoulder and gently bring the knee down so it's fist distance apart from the other one. Let's take the left foot out, bring it hip height. Let's twirl the ankle around in one direction. And then in the other direction. Flex the foot, keep it at its height and then bring the right arm in front of you. And again, think about the navel working the core. It's a balance pose. Balance is so important for us. Prevents falls. And bring the hand down, and bring the knee down. I'm gonna move the block out of the way. What I'd like to do now is, well, Let's come into puppy pose. So I'm trying, uh, I have a plan, but I'm, I'm reinventing as I go. So we're going to take our hands, bring them out in front of us, all the way out, take your forehead to the floor, leave your tailbone in the sky for puppy pose. This is stretching the spine out a little bit more. Come back, hands under shoulders, and let's bring our legs back. We're gonna to come to our bellies on the floor. Hands come down by your sides, palms up. You're gonna lift your head, lift your shoulders off the floor, lift your legs off the floor, and bring your hands back behind you up. It's a gentle back bend, it strengthens the spine. There's a little bit of compression in the back, in the lower back and release. If you feel any pain, don't do the position. Yoga is not about pain. If I don't wanna say if you feel any pain, if you feel more pain than you normally would feel, bring yourself back up, come to a seated position. Easy seat, so your legs folded in front of you. Take your left hand onto your right knee, your right hand behind you. Get tall and just look over your shoulder for another twist. Cross your hands in front of you. Come to the other side so your left hand is behind you for a twist here. And you're getting tall with the inhale and relaxing as you look over your shoulder. This is today's practice is really dedicated to the spine. Come forward and come over your legs as you tuck the toes under, hands are on the floor, come up to down dog. You might need to change your stance. Stretch out the spine. You can heel you know, um, pedal your feet for your hamstrings, keep a micro bend in the knees. It's our first down dog. So your hamstrings, you know, they're slowly getting warmed up. This is really about the length in the spine. Walk your feet to your hands and roll up into Tadasana. So in Tadasana, our, our knees are over our ankles, our hips are over our knees, ribs over hips, shoulders over ribs, and head is on straight in the middle. But I'm learning that it's okay and probably better as we age, if you have any knee issues, to keep a very slight micro bend in the knee because stacking like that, which is how we're taught in yoga, is what I'm learning, I learned it this morning, is 
hard on your knees, your knee joints. So if you'd like, if you have any knee, knee issues, want to protect the knees, slight micro bends in the knees, even when you're in Tadasana. We're going to do a sun salutation A. I'll come to the side. So you're in Tadasana. We inhale, raise our arms up, look up at your hands. It's a slight back bend. Exhale, release, reverse swan dive down to the floor. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Take a deep breath. On the next inhale, raise your arms up your shins. Take your shoulders back with a flat back. So here you almost want to feel your shoulders as if like someone had a karate chop in the center of your back so your shoulders and blades are moving together. Exhale, come back down, plant the hands on either side of the feet, come into plank. And with the same exhale, you're coming down into chaturanga. Now you can bring your knees to the floor first and do knees, chest, chin, or push up. With an inhale, you're coming up to a slight cobra. So this is a slight back bend. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. This is really slight. So you should be able to almost take the hands away from the mat and lift yourself up with just your strength of your core. Tuck the toes under, tailbone to the sky for down dog. Take a breath here, shake your head yes, shake your head no. So in yoga, we're always, there's gravity where we're rooting and rising or relaxing and strengthening. So right now our tailbone is rising. <laughs> we're rooting in with our feet and our hands and our, our spine is relaxed almost sinking to the floor. Our chest is almost sinking to the floor. Walk your feet to your hands. You're in a forward bend. So again, relax the head. You can micro bend the knees. Inhale, come up to flat back. Integrate the shoulders down your back. We should be able to serve tea on your back. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, reverse swan dive, the arms up. Touch the sky and exhale back to your side. We'll do a sun salutation B. So we're gonna start. So a lot of the yoga postures, when they say keep your feet close together, as we get older, it's better for your bones to have a fist dist distance apart. All the stuff I'm learning, I'm passing along. So you might wanna start in chair with your feet not so close together. In chair especially, they say keep your, the balls of your feet together. It's more important to protect the knees to have a little bit of distance between them. So we're in Tadasana. We inhale, our arms come up and we sink into a chair. So we're rooting with our hips, our feet, press the feet into the floor and we're rising with our torso. Take a deep breath here. This is really working the quads. You should be able to look over your knees and see your toes. You don't want your knees out way beyond your toes. So make sure because that's too much pressure on the knees. Take a couple of breaths here. And then as you exhale, drop, bring the tailbone to the sky and drop the spine, the head into a forward bend. Inhale, come up halfway for, with a flat back. Exhale, come back down. Come into push up or plank, sorry, and then push up. So you can bring your knees down if you'd like, otherwise, chaturanga. Let go of the toes. Let's come into a full cobra. So we're raising our spine and looking up where the wall meets the ceiling. Tuck the toes under, lift the tailbone to the sky for down dog. And with the next inhale, raise the right leg into the air. Bring the right leg through. You might need to help it, that's okay. To the inside of the right wrist. Take the back foot before you rise up with your arms. Take your back foot, turn it out 45 degrees. Now, let's take a look at your leg. This is one of the things I learned. Your knee has to go where your toes are pointed. So your knee just moved 45 degrees as well. Bend that front leg 90 degrees and come up into warrior one. Couple breaths here, hold it. See if you can bring that front leg 90 degrees. You don't want the knee past the ankle. If anything, you want it behind. It's um, easier on your knee. If it's behind, it's okay at 90. Exhale, both hands on either side of the front leg. 
turn the back foot so the toes are pointing forward again. Bring the right leg back to meet the left and you're in plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, actually let's do up dog. So come up, knees are up, thighs are up, hips are up. Everything's up except four points. So your palms are on the floor pressing and the fronts of your feet are pressing into the floor. Shoulders away from the ears, chest is wide, gazes up towards the ceiling. Curl the toes under, come into down dog. Take a breath and lift the left leg in the air. Bring it through, it's okay to help it. Before you come up, take that back leg, turn it 45 degrees, watch the knee go with it and come up into warrior one. Take a breath, see if you can keep that knee 90 degrees or less, more, I should say, well, I don't know. Math is whatever. <laughs> Just don't lean over towards the toes beyond the ankle. Hands on either side of the front foot. Turn the back foot so the toes are facing front again. Take the front foot, bring it back to the back. Come into plank. Lower yourself, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Uncurl the feet. Lift up again into up dog. Gaze is up. Gaze is also in yoga called drishti. So your drishti is towards where the wall meets the ceiling. Turk, tuck the toes under, come into down dog. I'm gonna take a couple of breaths here. Shake your head yes, shake your head no, no tension in the neck. Your spine is long, your tailbone is up. Your knees are micro bent or bent. Your heels are reaching towards the floor. Make sure you try to press all the parts of the foot into the mat and the hand is pressed, the fingers are pressed in. Deep breath. And walk your feet to the hands. Come into your forward bend, let yourself relax. See if you can take your knees a little deeper bend and let your stomach rest on your thighs. Hold your elbows, let yourself just swing. In your forward bend. Let your hands come down. Bring your hands halfway up your legs for a, with a flat back, take the shoulders back. Hands come back down and we're, cut, we're headed into chair. So we're going to reverse swan dive the arms so that they're out straight in front of us. We sink the hips in a chair. Just remember that you should be able to see your toes from beyond your knees as we root and rise. Torso's rising, spine's rising, as your hips are sinking, your feet are sinking. And then with an exhale, we raise up and hands to our sides for Tadasana. Okay, flow time. <laughs> Take your right foot, well, we're in Tadasana. So let's just stick in Tadasana for a second. Chest is wide. Shoulders back, arms out to your side, energy into your arms. Let's get an isometric exercise here. With your hands, just like this, take the right leg and bring it back behind you. Toes are pointed right ahead. I'm just stepping because I have two mats here. I don't want to get unbalanced. We're going to go into a balance off the front foot in a few minutes. So make sure that front foot is grounded into the, into the floor. One of the things I learned for stability and your knees is you can always take a stance shorter or wider. So we're in a high lunge and we are going to put our hands into prayer position and we're gonna do a prayer twist first. So you're going to, your, your front knee is bent. You're gonna take your elbow, the right elbow and drape it over the left thigh and come into a twist. Oops as I almost fall. I was telling Sherry, I really didn't sleep. So a little bit off my game today. Take your hands and bring them into prayer and you're up again and you're in your high lunge with prayer hands. Now we're going to, I mentioned we're gonna balance. So 
So spread the toes of the front foot. Your hands are still in prayer. You're going to gently come off the back leg and only onto the front leg as you raise the back leg, flexing the foot into warrior three. It might help to imagine that there's a wall behind you. You might not even want to imagine it. You might want to come to a wall. It's okay to use props. It's considered a prop, a wall. And it helps with balance to have a wall behind you. You're not really using the wall. It's, it's the proprioception of our body. It just helps. Try it if you have a wall near you. Try to have your torso be really long here. We don't wanna crunch up the spine as we're moving it through our practice today and, and giving it length. Gently let that foot come down. I wanna be on the other side. And as you bring it down, take the back foot, turn it so that the toes are pointed to the side of the mat or the, the side so it's perpendicular because we're coming into warrior two. So the back leg is the right leg into warrior two. Inhale, turn the palms up, straighten the leg. Now exhale with that Ujjayi breath and bring the hands down and bend the front leg. Inhale, come up, exhale down. One more time, inhale up, exhale down. And now we're gonna come into Peaceful Warrior. Inhale, Peaceful Warrior. Your right hand slides down the leg. Your left hand is over your ear. And exhale, side angle pose. We're gonna do this back and forth. So your forearm is over your thigh and your right, ar right arm is over your ear. Straight line, energy line, fingertips to the pinky toe side of the right foot. So again, inhale, Peaceful Warrior. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, peaceful. Exhale, side angle. And then come back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg as if someone's taking your fingers and bringing them to the front of the room, tip down into triangle pose. Here is where you might wanna take your right hand and open up your right ribs so that your chest is wide and long, your shoulders are back as if there were two panes of glass your entire body would fit like, like the peanut butter in two pieces of bread or in between two panes of glass. Hold this position. If, if this is difficult for you and you wanna have a block, you can easily take a block at any level and bring it right in the inside of the front foot or the outside of the front foot. Both work for triangle. You can take it down to a lower level. Your front leg is straight though. Come back up to warrior two. And now turn both feet to the side for wide angle pose. So the feet, the toes are pointed straight ahead. We're going to actually take the heels, bring them slightly inside. So your little pigeon toed, bring the, the knees over the toes. If you have to shorten your stance, do that for goddess legs and bring up your goddess arms. This is integrating your shoulders down your back. You can actually feel the shoulders squeezing into one another. Hold that. See if you can sink a little bit lower. Straighten the legs, turn the heel so that the feet are again pointed straight ahead. Your arms come down onto your waist. We come into a flat back. So we felt this way before where we integrated the shoulders down our back as if someone was karate chopping us. You can still hold your waist. We're bending at the hip flexor. Take your hands and see if you can take your middle finger and index finger and wrap them around the inside of the front toe and come into a yogi toe hold. So it's almost a, fo it is a forward bend over your wide legs. Let your head drop, let your head relax. Say yes, say no. Your elbows are bent. You walk your hands, you can let go and walk your hands to the right. Feel the spine twist a little bit. Walk your hands to the left. 
I'm assuming you have a block nearby, take the block, place it so that it's under your head. Put your right, your left hand down on the block, which should be in the middle of your body right now, and take the right hand up to the sky for a twist. Switch hands, right hand comes onto the block and left hand comes on to, up to the sky. And release, let yourself come into a hang, forward bend hang. With your hands down on the ground in front of you, let's heel toe our feet together. With about a fist distance apart and roll yourself up into Tadasana. We have the other side. Okay, so this time come to the front of the mat. We're gonna take, come to Tadasana, so shoulders back, palms outstretched. Take the left foot and bring it back behind you, toes pointed towards the front of the room so that both toes are pointed in the same direction. We're gonna put our hands into prayer position and we're going to hook the left elbow over the right thigh. For a, for a prayer twist. You have, oops, it's okay when you fall, you're just supposed to laugh at yourself. There's no judgment. Take, if you can, and you'd like to try, you can try opening up your arms. So your left hand would come onto the floor and your right arm goes to the sky and you actually have to focus on bringing your torso nice and long, not compressing. And then come back, bring your, Hands to heart center, come so that your torso is straight up again. Plant that front foot, spread the toes wide. We're coming into warrior three, our balance pose. So you might wanna hop that back foot slowly up, bend at the hip crease and lift the back leg. Again, if you'd like to come to a wall, it's a great prop. Put that flat foot, the flexed foot up on the wall you're not really leaning on it, right? The press, the gravity is in the right leg right now. Your torso's long. It's just having it there. So if you can imagine it there while you're on your mat, it helps. And slowly when you're ready, you can hold that as long as you like. Come down. Plant the, the foot is planted behind you. You're gonna turn the toes so that they're facing to the side of the mat, your front foot is facing the front, it's um, facing the side, so it's, I got a little mixed up there, but your feet are perpendicular. You're gonna take your left arm and wheelhouse it back. Your right arm is in front of you and we're in warrior two. Your gaze is to your fingers, your front fingers. Your front knee has to be facing the same direction as the toes, so don't let it come in. Make sure that it's facing straight ahead Back leg is strong, pressing into the pinky toe side of the foot. Turn your palms up. As you inhale, straighten the front leg. And as you exhale, bring it back down. Palms up, inhale. See, remember that Ujjayi breath. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And now, peaceful warrior, slide the left hand down the leg as you inhale with peace, for peaceful warrior and take the right arm as you inhale into side angle pose. So the right arm is draped over the front leg. There's a long energy line from the left fingertips down to the left pinky toe side of the foot pushing into the mat. Exhale, peaceful warrior. Inhale, side angle. Exhale, peaceful warrior. Inhale, side angle. And now wheelhouse the arm back. We're in warrior two. Strengthen that front leg so that the deeper bench, making sure that the knee is over the same direction as the toes. Straighten the front leg as if someone's taking your front fingertips and pulling them forward, tip over into triangle pose. You might wanna use your left arm to open up the rib cage Open the chest, open the heart. And again, as if there's a wall behind you. You wanna be as, as narrow as you can. We're holding this for a moment. If you wanna use a block, feel free to use a block. A 
come back up into warrior two. So bend that front leg, hands on your waist, turn your torso to the center, bring the front feet foot so that it's facing the same as the other one. So your both toes are facing the mat and heel toe yourself a little bit more together so that your heels are towards each other, your little pigeon toed, bring your hands to your heart center and we are gonna come down into a yogi squat. Malasana. You're using your elbows to press out your knees. It's a hip stretch. You might wanna to try to lift the hips a little bit. It's, it's more challenging that way. Children do this. This is how they sit until they sit in chairs. And then we forget how to do it, but it's such an important, such an important position, such an important asana for us to practice. We're gonna stay here for a moment. So deep breaths, see if you can fill the belly, expand the lungs, see if you can lift your torso up a little bit more, create a little bit more space between the vertebrae of the spine. Now, if you'd like to come into crow, this is the point that we would be doing that. Your hands come down onto the floor. Sometimes it's easier if you have a block. So you put the block behind you and you can bring your feet up onto the block, which allows them to come a little bit higher. Your knees press into your upper arms and you tilt forward. Now, just be careful because you don't want to land on your head if you have no padding there. And you let your feet go. This is, there we go, crow. It's a fun position. You're going to raise your hips to the sky. You're in a forward bend. Bring, make sure your feet are forward, no more pigeon toed in the same direction. And we're just going to roll up, shoulders back. Balance is so important. So I know that we did some balancing asanas, we did warrior three to balance. We're gonna do tree for a moment just because I feel like balance, we don't balance enough. And you know, I'm in Florida with all these people that I see that have mobility issues. So it's really important to do tree. So plant your toes, spread them wide. Make sure you're on all this fist distance apart, your feet, ground into your left foot. Feel the whole foot press into the floor. Take the right foot, come up to the ball of your foot, turn the heel so it's on the interior of the leg, of the left leg, and raise it to whatever level is comfortable for you. Arms in prayer, arms could be, your branches could be waving, you can come back into goddess arms, which brings the shoulders back behind you. If you know you're gonna be sitting at a desk the rest of the day or looking at your phone, this is great for your shoulders. Or clasp your hands behind you. And if you come down, just smile. And it's a different position each leg, each moment, each day. Some people could come to the inside of the thigh. Some of it depends on your flesh, right? It's compression, flesh on flesh when you do this versus um, flesh on bone, different forms of compression, we're all different. So a five foot ballerina who's 90 pounds versus a football player, they're not gonna be doing the posture in the same way. Let the foot come back down to meet the other. Just pedal the legs until you feel a more evenness in the legs and then plant your right foot. So spread the toes wide. Get the whole, all sides of the heel of the foot. Then take the right, the left foot up on the ball of the foot, turn it in towards the inside of the leg and bring it to where you can on this leg. So I have less compression on this leg and see if you can not throw your hip out to compensate for it. And you can hold on to a chair or a wall or a couch or anything available to you. Props are wisdom, not weakness. Hands, branches in the sky, goddess arms, hands behind you, whatever you like, whatever feels good. Gently bring that leg down. That wasn't so gentle for me. <laughs> Spread your toes wide. Find your Tadasana. Find some isometric energy in the body. <sighs> Take a deep breath. See if we can do cow arms for a second. So bring the right arm up by your ear. 
bend the elbow. So the elbow's by your head. You might, if you have a strap, this is a good time to, to use it. You can grab that strap into this hand and then take your left arm and bring it behind you and bend it and see if you can reach the fingers together. Maybe you can do more than fingers, or if not, it's fine to use a strap to bring them, but this is a great stretch for the shoulders and the arms. Release the left, release the right. I know that I need a strap for this hand. So let's take the, if you have a strap, you just hold it in your left arm now, bring the arm up into the air, bend the elbow so that it's by your head, take the right arm, bring it behind you, bend it, and see if you can bring those hands close together. And just like me, I mean, this, this is one that I have to use the strap for, just bringing it close. We have different sides, different abilities on different sides, different days, different breaths. But this is a great stretch. Release the bottom arm, release the top arm. And let's come into a seated position with our legs in front of us. Flex the feet. Do inhale, bring your arms up. Torso gets raised and long. And as you exhale, fold over your legs. Now you wanna to try to keep a straight back. So the folds might only just be a drop until you feel the back start to round. You're bending at the hip flexor. Take a deep breath in, exhale, and then relax and let the, bound, the back round. Just, you might wanna take a block and put it in between your legs at the highest level to relax your forehead onto the block. I remember when I was in college and I took yoga, the yoga teacher used to say that when you forward bend, you're going inward and you see more of yourself. And when you do a back bend or any position that opens the chest, it's more of an extroverted position and you're opening up your heart to the world and both are important. And I love to look at it that way. We need both. Remove the block. Take the right leg, put the sole of the foot on the floor, with the knee bent, we're gonna twist again. So as you inhale, get tall. As you exhale, take your left arm and hook it around, or you could just grab, you know, it's probably easier, grabbing the right leg and hooking it in between the elbow. Take the right arm, bring it behind you, get really tall and then look over the shoulder for a twist. Try to keep that left, the toes pointing to the ceiling. Don't let them splay to the side, but we're twisting here. Come back around and let's just switch legs. So hook the right arm over the left leg. Before you even turn around to twist, get tall on the inhale. And as you exhale, that's when you twist. back around, come to center. Let's bring our feet together into bound angle pose and let the knees relax. If this bothers your knees at all, you can put blocks under your knees. This is a hip opener. It's great for the legs. This is a really good thing to do if you're just sitting watching TV on your, or on your bed. You know, when you wake up in the morning, this is one of those good ones to do in bed. You could do this reclined, Okay, come down to, to the mat. We're gonna come into reclined position. Let your left foot go straight out. Put your right foot in the air. Just point and flex. Give your ankle a little bit of a turn. If you have a strap, you can take the strap around the ball of the foot. If not, you could just hold on to the calf and you're gonna allow the right foot to go out to its own side. Holding the strap with just the right arm as your left arm is almost balancing and it comes out to a T on its own side. Bring the right foot back up. Release the strap, let the right leg come down to meet the left. Bring the left leg up straight in the air. 
twirl the ankle around, point and flex it. Make sure you twirl it in the opposite direction. Point and flex. If you have a strap, put it around the ball of the foot. Hold it in the left hand, let your right arm, palm facing up, come out to its own side as you let the left leg go out to its own side. Bring the left leg back up, release the strap. Oops, doesn't want to be released. Hug the knees into the chest. Put the feet up in the air. Grab the outside of the feet, the pinky toe side with your hands and bring the knees towards your armpits, bringing the tailbone down at the same time for happy baby. So feel where your back, your spine meets the floor. Your tailbone should be headed towards the floor as your arm, your uh, knees are going into your armpits. This is almost a upside down squat. So we squatted earlier, now we're squatting again, just upside down. And then allow your legs to come down and bring them out straight in front of you as we come into Shavasana. So allow your legs to just relax, your feet may splay out, allow your arms to come down by your side, palms facing up in yoga that just shows your openness and gratitude. If, you're, if you can close your eyes, that's great. If not, you wanna find a spot on the ceiling that you can have a soft gaze and go inward. And as you're doing that with your eyes closed or with your soft gaze, scan the body for any tension. You wanna start with your feet and work your way up. And if you feel any tension, a lot of us are gonna feel it in your hips, you could feel it in your back as your where your back meets the floor. See if you can release something there. We tend to really tense up our backs. Allow your shoulders, almost let them, bring them up and see if you can integrate them down your back a little bit more so that your shoulders are more open, your chest is open wider. So be a, be a tension hunter and look for tension in your body somewhere to release it. I'll repeat to you the words that my yoga teacher used to tell us in Shavasana, which is you are beauty, you are light, you are truth, you are love. like to add you our joy. Let's all have so much joy. If you'd like to stay here, you're welcome to stay. Shavasana is a beautiful way to end yoga. It integrates every part of your body. And we just worked almost every muscle in the body. But if you'd like to join me, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, put your arms over your head and give yourself a really full body stretch. And then leaning to your right side, use your left arm to come up into a seated position.
bringing your hands into prayer position. In yoga, we say namaste, which means that the light in me sees the light in you. And I wanna add that I'm so grateful and honored that you chose to spend your Friday morning with me. Namaste, have a wonderful weekend.